In June this year, Getter saw its stock market valuation more than triple to $7.5 billion. This means the fledgling rapid delivery company is now worth more than Marks & Spencer's, Morrison's, and incumbent delivery market leader, Deliveroo. Rewind just 12 months, and unless you were shopping online for groceries in Turkey, you probably wouldn't have heard of Getir, which only started trading outside of its home country in January. In fact, 12 months ago, you probably wouldn't have heard of any of the new wave of rapid delivery companies, including Wheezy, Jiffy, Deja, Zap, Fancy, and Gorillas, which have exploded across the UK, bringing with them staggering investment and the promise of delivery in as little as 10 minutes. Wheezy, one of the first ultra-fast delivery companies to launch in the UK during the height of the pandemic, will pack and deliver goods to your door in 15 minutes for around half the price of its supermarket rivals. Essentially, 15 minutes, what that does is that it brings the online equivalent, uh, makes it as fast as the offline equivalent. So now, uh, 15 minutes, that, that's, that's generally faster than anyone can go and get their own groceries, especially if you consider that we're stocking products from multiple uh, local stores. Um, and so suddenly, not only does it, does it require less of your time because you, you're ordering it online, but it's also even faster than you could do yourself. This is the story of how ultra-fast delivery became the new normal. Tesco, the UK's largest supermarket, announced earlier this year that it was launching its own speedy delivery service, Woosh, in response to massive demand from customers. While Tesco has now expanded this service to at least 12 stores across the UK, just like Sainsbury's Chop Chop service, Asda's express delivery option and Waitrose now cancelled rapid delivery service, not one of these supermarkets could promise delivery in under 60 minutes. So how is it that the UK's largest supermarkets with vast store estates, country spanning logistics networks and billions of pounds in revenue can be so drastically outperformed by a handful of startups? Supermarkets and third-party delivery companies like Deliveroo use what's called a store picking model, where riders or store staff have to pick items from a store designed to accommodate public shoppers. Meanwhile, these newcomers use networks of hyper-local fulfillment centres, specifically tailored to ensuring the fastest delivery possible without having to worry about serving the public. Wheezy has its own fulfillment centres that are not open to customers and that it fully controls. Like it, we, we, we pay the rent, we employ the store manager, the shift leads, um, and, and we employ um, through, through worker contracts the um, customer delivery reps who deliver the, the items. Um, and essentially, I don't believe that um, a store picking model is, is, is a winning approach to, this, uh, to, to, the, to the customer needs. According to Dent, this model is inherently slow as it's essentially retrofitted to existing consumer facing models. Not only does partnering with third party retailers mean delivery companies have far less control over both stock and quality, but their pickers have to navigate through stores full of shoppers and then match to riders who are invariably gig economy workers, meaning even less control over the entire process. Weezy's fulfillment centre model is just much stronger and provides a much stronger customer proposition, which is faster, better quality, with exactly the products that customers want. Um, and that there are also um, fewer costs in the chain because we're not having to uh, run a shop alongside a warehouse. We just run a, a much cheaper warehouse, which also means that the business model stacks up much more strongly. Not only does this differentiate Wheezy from current market leaders, but this lower operating cost and much greater control over the supply chain has already allowed it to outperform them. Wheezy is understood to have grown more than three times as much as Deliveroo in its first year. Despite being rivals with very different models, Deliveroo is central to the story of how these ultra-fast delivery startups have risen to prominence in the UK. In the first months of the pandemic, Deliveroo was in dire financial straits. Prior to the pandemic, it relied almost entirely on the takeaway industry, and the closure of major restaurant chains like Nando's, KFC and Predamonje to all customers saw its revenues dive bomb. In April, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, which was widely expected to block Amazon from taking a major stake in Deliveroo, said without Amazon's multi-million pound investment, Deliveroo would have failed financially. The ruling read, while Deliveroo has sought to expand its supply of convenience groceries during the crisis, these sales are limited and have not made up for the losses in its restaurant business. 
Over the coming weeks, Deliveroo turned its attention away from the dormant restaurant business and towards the booming grocery sector. Almost overnight, UK supermarkets were faced with staggering demand for their online delivery services, as the reality of lockdown set in across the UK. Delivery slots became almost impossible to attain, forcing retailers like Ocado to turn away any new customers for months, leaving many vulnerable shoppers without access to food or supplies. Grocers could simply not expand their home delivery networks fast enough to meet demand. However, by partnering with Deliveroo, they had access to a near nationwide network of delivery drivers instantly. It was a near perfect solution, both for retailers scrambling to rapidly expand their digital capabilities and for the struggling Deliveroo. Soon, 16 major retailers, including Audi, which had previously never sold its food online, Co-op, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Booth's and Waitrose all launched partnerships with the delivery giant. Delivery's grocery delivery arm soon represented a significant portion of its revenues. By the end of the year, Delivery had such confidence in its finances that it announced plans to go public and launch what would become one of the most hotly anticipated IPOs in years. It was Deliveroo's journey from near financial collapse to IPO in less than a year, almost entirely driven by grocery delivery, that showed these previously cautious startups just how ready the market was for them. I hope it's been really interesting because it's doubled the, the online penetration of groceries. So we were sort of 7 percentish pre-pandemic, we're now at 14. By the way, that's leading uh, across all of Europe and, and pretty much the world. Um, so lots of new people have tried it and are now convinced that online groceries make sense. However, Delivery's fortunes were set to reverse once more, as its eagerly anticipated IPO descended into disaster. As the UK began to emerge from lockdown, investors began to doubt that its model could work in a non-pandemic world, leading its shares to drop 30% in what was dubbed the worst IPO in London's history. While the financial market may have doubts about the longevity of companies which rose to prominence during the pandemic, so-called work-from-home stocks, Wheezy expects to grow even faster post-pandemic. If you think about it, we launched in, in the summer of 2020, and at that point, everyone was working from home and was staying at home, really planning their meals weeks in advance because they were always eating at home. And actually, an on-demand supermarket like Wheezy really thrives in an environment where people are living an on-demand and last-minute lifestyle. So they are unable to plan their groceries weekly. They don't know when they're going to be at home to get a, whether it's an Ocado or Sainsbury's delivery, and therefore they need a service that fits around their life. And, and that's where something like Wheezy as an on-demand supermarket really comes into, into play. The use case of Wheezy, although it's been extremely strong throughout COVID, um, it is, it is getting even stronger now that the economy is opening up because people are unable to plan their whole week's worth of shopping because they don't know if they have after work drinks or uh, if, if a plan with friends might, might, um, might happen or might not. Um, and, and so being able to order exactly what you need when you need it, it is, is much more convenient than having to plan ahead uh, a, a week in advance. And essentially it stops customers becoming what we like to say um, uh, hostages by, by their own fridges uh, where you know you have mincemeat that's like ordering you to eat it tonight or essentially you're chucking it in the bin. So it's, it's reducing waste as well. So do these ultra fast delivery companies really represent the next evolution in online delivery? Or are their 10 minute promises simply a gimmick that shoppers will soon forego once the novelty wears off? Ocado's CEO, Tim Steiner, a man who has built his career disrupting the grocery delivery space, had this to say. Whilst there is an interesting market for a 10 minute or 15 minute service compared to a half hour service, there's not often a consumer need where it's really worthwhile spending £10 on delivery rather than 2 50 to get it in 15 minutes rather than 30 minutes. Dent, on the other hand, believes speed will change everything. Speed is important because essentially when the online equivalent becomes as fast as the offline equivalent, that's where you see monumental behavioural shifts. Uh, and a good example of that is Amazon Prime. If you look at when Amazon Prime was introduced, which I think is about 2015, that's also actually a massive pivotal moment in, in, in the Amazon uh, share price. 